Today's lesson is on adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. First of all, let's add these two polynomials. I like to stack my polynomials vertically, and I like to line them up with the like terms. Also, standard form is best. You want to go from highest exponent to lowest exponent. So notice I'm putting the x cubed right under the other x cubed and now i'm going to put the x squared line it up also and then the minus two i'm going to move it way over there make sure you know that if there's no coefficient there then the coefficient is one so i have 3x cubed plus 8x squared minus 3x plus 2 final answer For example, 2, it's almost the same, except for we want to distribute that negative sign. Okay, so we have 5x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 1. And now I'm going to do a negative 3x cubed. Negative times negative gives me a positive x and then a negative 8. And now I'm just adding. So I have 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x minus 7. Final answer. Example 3. We have to distribute 3 times. Actually, I like to have the binomial before the trinomial. I always like the least amount of terms to go first. It's not necessary. That's just my personal preference. Because first, I'm going to distribute the x to all terms. And then I'm going to distribute the negative 3 to all terms. So I just feel like I'm doing less distributing if I distribute twice versus doing three times to these two. Anyway, so distributing my x, I have negative x cubed. Doing the next term, I have a positive 2x squared. And then doing the x to the third term, I have 4x. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 3 to all three terms. So negative times negative is a positive 3x squared minus 6x minus 12. Combine like terms. 5x squared minus 2x minus 12. Final answer. You never want to turn around and factor or anything. The direction says multiply. So that's what we do. Even if you see everything's divisible by a certain number, don't do it. Only follow the directions. So now we have three things to multiply. Remember that multiplication is commutative. If you do 2 times 12, you get 24. Or if you do 6 times 4. So order doesn't matter. We could even do 8 times 3. No matter what order you do it in, you're still going to get the same 24. So that holds true for these binomials. I just like to do the second two first, but it doesn't matter. You can do it your own way. So here I get first x squared. If I add outer and inner, that gives me a negative 4x. And negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. Outer and inner are generally like terms, so I like to put them together in my head. Now, I'm going to distribute the x to all three terms. And now I'm going to do the 2 to all three terms. And notice how nicely they line up. And now I can easily add the like terms. 
that's negative and that's positive so that's negative 2x squared watch those integers Alrighty, and there we go. For example, five, we're gonna multiply. Notice the last one is squared. So whenever it's squared, that's saying that we're gonna do it twice. Okay, so I'm just gonna write it twice and scratch out that square. I'm gonna go ahead and do those two first. So I have First is 4x squared, outer is 6x, inner is 6x, so that gives me 12x. So notice that just doubles, and then that's 9. And now, you can do it in any order you want. You can multiply the 3x into the x minus 1, but I think I'm going to wait. I think I'm just going to... Distribute the x across, and I'm going to leave the 3x out here for a moment. However, it doesn't matter. You could do it now or later. The order doesn't matter. You get the same answer. And now I'm going to multiply the negative 1. And you want to be very careful, like right there, I just messed up. That should be subtraction. That's negative 12x. And then I'm looking at a negative 9. So here, the 3x is still out front. And I have a 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 3x minus 9. And now I'm going to distribute the 3x to all four of these terms. And that gives me a 12x to the fourth plus 8x cubed minus 9x squared minus 27x. And that is my final answer. Alrighty, now I'd like to go over some common errors with you. A uh, big mistake that students often make is that they want to distribute like this. And I say, no, 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 don't do it. This is definitely not equivalent. This left side... means this and if i were to fold it i'd get a squared outer would be a b and inner is a b so that's two a b's and then last would be b squared so notice that this a squared plus b squared is missing this term here and we are going to soon learn that this factors as a plus bi. Remember our imaginary, a minus bi. And I love this when we want to factor the sum of squares before we only learn the difference. But watch this double check that I'm about to do. If I do first, I get a squared. If I do outer, I get a minus a bi. And inner, I get a plus ABI. And last, carefully, I'm going to say minus B squared. See, I got the negative. B times B is B squared. And I times I, we remember from the last chapter, is negative 1. So I'm looking at A squared. And these are opposites, so they cancel out. And then the negative B squared... And then remember, i squared is negative 1. So that gives me a squared plus b squared, which is exactly what we have here, but still not at all equivalent to this side. These mean two different things. Another common error is to think that these two are equivalent. You, again, cannot distribute no no and no. This side 
is A minus B times A minus B. Remember when it's squared, that means you do it twice. And if we were to multiply this out, we'd get that. And we already know how to factor the difference of two squares is A plus B, A minus B. And if we were to multiply this out and double check it, we would see A squared for first, outer would be a minus AB, inner is a plus AB, and last is a B squared. So we can clearly see that it does double check. And we can see those are equivalent, but this is not the same, not at all. You see, these are both minus over here, and over here, one's plus and one's minus. So very different. I just want to make sure you never, ever try to distribute that square. And the last and probably the biggest common error is A plus B cubed does not equal a cubed plus b cubed because again we cannot distribute in a binomial no no don't do it this side equals a plus b times a plus b times a plus b and i'm going to move through this proof quickly for you i'm going to multiply the second two together And when we distribute the A, we get A cubed plus 2A squared B plus AB. And then when we distribute the B to all of them, we get a A squared B that goes with that one. We get a 2A. Oh, I forgot my square on this one. Sorry about that. And then when we do last, we get a B. Oh, I forgot my square there too when I did my first outer inner last. So that's B cubed. And now when we add these together, and this is something that I'll teach you how to derive without doing all this work. That's coming very soon. So this is equivalent to this. Notice that there's a lot missing and that that does not at all equal that. Now this side, let me switch colors, is very different. You're going to soon learn that this factors as and if you remember it from today, it's going to save you some work um, in the next few sections. This is actually A plus B times A squared minus AB plus B squared. And this is something I'll ask you to memorize. Notice that that does not equal this because this term right here is different than this term right here. Other than that, they're almost the same. Um, and we could double check it. We could absolutely double check it by distributing the A to all three. And we would get A cubed minus A squared B plus A B squared. And then if we distribute the B, We get A squared B minus AB squared plus B cubed. And look at what happens. And we just end up with the A cubed plus B cubed, which is exactly what we started with. So this side, the left side, is not at ever equal to the right side. Maybe if A and B are both zero, then yeah, it would work. But other than that, it's never equal. Okay, so that concludes.